today on Woodworking with Wes, we have a video that I want to show you that will give you a sneak peek into what the sessions of our Q&A on our membership site look like. Stick around and we'll give you all the details. Hey Nathan, thank you very much for your question. Your question was, how do I work with real wood veneer that has gone crinkly? I appreciate your crinkly description because I know exactly what you're talking about. First off, before we really get started, let's talk a little bit about veneer so that people understand that veneer comes different ways and why you end up with crinkly veneer. There are two different ways veneer comes. Veneer comes a lot with a paper back. You can buy it in two foot wide, eight foot long, or even four foot wide, eight foot long, where they've already book matched their pieces and this paper back keeps it all nice and flat. Typically what people use is the paper backed veneer. However, it comes in basically the most used kinds of wood, oak, ash, alder, walnut, those types of things. But when you get into the exotics or specific little veneers that are, are burls or crotches or things like that, those don't come with a paper back. And when they make those types of veneers, the way it's done is the log will be set in a, in a, a machine that has a, almost like a razor blade uh, cutter, and it's huge. I've seen ones that were eight feet long. And this cuts it off and the pieces fall off just like the pages of a book. And so as it cuts the veneer, it cuts, fall, cut, fall, and it just is really, really cool because it cuts way thin. However, in order for them to be able to cut that veneer that thin, the log needs to be moist. As it dries, that's when it crinkles. Let me show you. Here is a piece of veneer, you can see the crinkle, left over from a project that I did. This is mahogany crotch veneer. Very paper thin. In fact, it has dried out to the point now where it's as brittle as a potato chip. What causes the problem now is if you were trying to put this onto a piece of wood, it would crush just like a potato chip. So there's a process that you can go through to make this a workable piece of veneer for your project. We're gonna go through those steps. Let's show you the first step. This is the size of the flitch that we got when we ordered our veneer. There were 25 pieces, all just one right after another off the log. And you can see how it's really crinkled. Look how extreme that has uh, crinkled. I, I still like that word how extreme that has crinkled. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to just take water. We're going to wet down a towel. What we have to do first is to get some moisture back into this veneer so that it will relax. And I do that by just taking a squirt bottle just like I did and just really kind of soaking the veneer down on both sides and get it wet. Don't be afraid to get it wet all the way out to the edges and especially the parts that are really, really tightened up. Okay, we'll turn that like that. And I'm going to do my, I've got several pieces here that are leftovers from that project that I did. I've done veneer, veneering um, with both kinds of veneer and I really enjoyed this project. It was a reproduction or a replication of a piece of furniture that was almost 200 years old and it was just a fun, fun, fun project to do, but I had to learn all of the nuances of real wood flitches like this. Okay, see how I got that all wet? Rub it in a little bit. Be careful not to press on your veneer because you don't want to, like I say, it's you know just as brittle as a potato chip. You don't want to be doing anything like that as far as crushing it or anything like that. 
See how it's already starting to dry a little bit? That's soaking in that water. Make sure you get that good and wet. Okay, we'll lay that here. Let me go ahead and get these other pieces already soaked down and then I'll show you how we finish it up a little bit. Okay, we have moistened all of our pieces of veneer. Now these are the pieces that are just left over from that project that I had. We're laying on, we're not putting any pressure. Then we're going to take a towel over the top and I'm gonna lay it over here. Moisten one side of our towel. We don't want this to dry too fast and we're going to leave this with just the moist towel laying over the top and underneath for about 15 minutes so that the moisture that we put in can absorb into the veneer and relax the veneer a little bit. So that's step one. We'll leave that for about 15 minutes. We'll come back. We've allowed our time to go by, our 15 minutes. Let's see how we did. All right, yes. Okay, now see our veneer is no longer brittle. And that's what we're after. It's softened a little bit, relaxed a little bit. Let's move our stack out here, getting ready for our next process. Our next process is to press our veneer between two boards. Okay. There, we'll get that. And we're now going to use a solution. This is called Veneer Tamer. I purchased this from Amazon and will provide you with a link. But if we were just to allow the water to completely dry out, we would be right back to where we started from. So this solution actually softens the veneer and allows it to dry but to stay soft and workable. And it's called Veneer Tamer. There are other solutions. This is the one that I purchased from Amazon and used and it works great. So that's why I'm recommending it. But the way you do it, let me get some paper over here. According to the instructions on the uh, product is you put, let's see, I'm gonna fold this. It says put it between sheets of newspaper or similarly uh, absorbent material. This is just some packing paper. We're just gonna use packing paper because it works really well. We'll put two or three sheets. Okay, now you do this between every layer. Now we have enough uh, veneer here to be three layers thick. And so what we want to do is we want to put our paper between each layer. And you do the same thing with your uh, solution as you did with your water. Make sure that you get plenty of solution. It says get it soaked both sides. So just like we did with our water. There we go. Flip it over. You can see how the water was absorbed on our original soaking. Now we go back and use it, the solution to soak it and it will also absorb in. You can see how it also relaxed those really, really tight places that were so crinkled, again with your word. Okay, one level, more paper. The paper will absorb some of the moisture or the, will absorb the moisture out of the wood 
without taking the solution with it. The solution will stay absorbed in the wood, but the moisture itself will be absorbed, leaving a softened but dry piece of veneer. Okay. Next level. And we just repeat this process on each piece of wood as we build up our layers, getting ready to press it. Okay, with our last level of wood, all moistened and our last level of paper applied and like I said it says you can use newsprint I just happen to have this packing paper so I'm using it then we put a our layer another layer of wood on top like this and we clamp these two layers, or this layers, these layers together between our two pieces of wood. Now I like to get a clamp on every corner and then go back and fill in the, you want to clamp it all good all the way around so your pressure is even on your board so that it's a nice even press on your veneer. Okay, let me go ahead and finish clamping this up and I'll come back and show you. Okay, we have our clamps good and tight. Our veneer is pressed in between this. According to the instructions on the label, it, you want to have this in there a minimum of one hour. I'll tell you how I did it when I did mine. I left it like three or four hours, and then you change it out several times until your veneer is completely dry. Typically 24 hours, and I leave my last one in like overnight. So I'll change it out two or three times during the day, leave it overnight in the morning, we'll take it out and take a look. So follow the instructions on your veneer tamer, but this is the way I did it. Every three or four hours, four or five hours, two or three times overnight for the last step. Let's take a look in the morning, I'll see you then. Well, Nathan, it's been overnight. We changed our papers three times yesterday, just like our instructions on our bottle told us to do. So let's open up and let's see how we did. Okay, here's the unveiling. All right. Our paper is dry, which means it has absorbed all the moisture from our veneer. Okay, here's our first piece. Yeah, look how nice and flat and how pliable this is. It's not brittle anymore. Very nice. Let's set that over there and see what our next one looks like. Oh yeah, look how nice and flat. Let me, let me just get that up close so you can see. And look how it bends, flexible, nice and flat. Now your veneer is workable. You can apply it to your surface and have a workable veneer. Let's see how our big sheet came out. That's always the one that was most important because it was really crinkly. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, look how nice that looks. That's just so nice, so smooth, so flat, so pliable. This now is a workable piece of veneer. And you know, now that I have these pieces all flattened out, 
I think I'm going to make a project with these pieces of veneer and I'm going to do it just exclusively on the platform so that you can see a nice piece of furniture that wouldn't be on YouTube. It'll be so cool. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I'll do something. It'll be really neat. You might want to watch that and see how the veneer that we worked with comes out on a project. We're going to see you then. Oh, Nathan, I forgot to tell you one last thing. On the, the instructions on the bottle, it says, after you get it flattened like this, keep it not necessarily pressed, but keep it between the boards that you used for your press until you actually use it. That will help keep it, uh, the, the, the solution, uh, embedded into the wood and, and keep it fresh and ready to go for the project. So um, just kind of keep it between the boards just like I have it right now, maybe even the paper in between until you get ready to use it. Just an added little thing that was put on the instructions that I forgot to mention. Alrighty, I hope you have success in your project. I'd love to see it when it's all done. Send me a picture. Thanks, Nathan. Okay, here's the fun stuff. I will be your personal mentor to answer your challenges and your personal questions on our easy to use platform. I'm going to make you a personalized video that will help you just for you. We also have a community to help support you and we have exclusive videos that are ad free videos that are not on YouTube. I want you to go to woodworkingwithwes.com and check out the promptings that will help you learn all that you need to know to join us on our exclusive site. See you there.